you know, you were talking about your doctor who does not understand how, why you wouldn't get the pill because you wanted to understand your cycle. Reason what our patriarchal society would tell you, well, he's a doctor. So what the fuck do you, you know, do you pay him if you don't do what he says? He knows better. Mm. It's so hard for people to understand, no, it wouldn't feel better and he's still a man and he wouldn't understand. And he still doesn't have my body. Like he doesn't yeah. know what I'm going through. So, yeah. Yeah, and it's something like, the moment we can do something about it is the moment people accept that at some point they will be irrelevant and it will be offensive for them to say something. Just sometimes there are moments, there are situations, there are conversations that you have to understand it is not your place. And it's the same for everyone. I'm in between two waters always, you know, because I'm, I could be considered as white. I have a white person's name and surname, but also I'm not that white. Uh, assuming, you know, with what the others told me, I was like, am I not white? You know, like, where do you come from? And I'd be like, mm -hmm. what do you mean? I'm French. My name is Audrey Robert. Uh, it doesn't get uh, Frenchier than that. Trust me. With some white friends, I'd be like, wow, you need to shut the fuck up right now because you have no idea what you're talking about and this is offensive like what you're saying right now is offensive and also with some um uh um how do you see it uh, 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 there is a there is a term to say people of race people of color people of color yeah people of color, yeah, people of color. it's just like i'm struggling to find my words in english uh we have a word in french which is racisé which basically just means that you're from a, 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 another race than white. I will sometimes be in a position where I cannot say anything and yeah. my point of view is not relevant because my name sounds French, like white French, and I could uh, pass, you know, I could like kind of chameleon myself into this white person. Me as well. Like, sure, I have the dark hair and the skin um but i can still like i have the same problem right it's when i have friends who are um yeah my friends who are people of color basically sometimes it is really okay to shut up it is totally fine to let these people just these people to let your friends them those here <laughs> <laughs> no i get it, of course I get it. yeah to, to just let them vent about their struggles you know because that is something you cannot relate to you can maybe relate to in part but also not really and you don't always have to be part of every fucking conversation it is more yeah. than fine to just listen exactly you know? and also just stop fucking justifying everything Yes. Every fucking offensive things that people go through just stops trying to justify them. You know, I'm having a real trouble with that. Like trying to be like, yeah, but you know, maybe she was just and and you know, I'm like, I don't, I, I don't fucking care. You know, we all have problems, and the thing is, right now, I'm, I was offended, and it hurt, and I will be able to just let it sink in and then go back to it and yeah. feel if it really was meant to hurt me or if maybe I overreacted. But this is for me to evaluate. I don't need anyone to tell me that I'm going, that I'm too harsh, that I'm too hasty, you know, that it, it I'm like, I know what I'm doing. You know, yeah. I, I don't need people like I will. And if, you know, if I'm too hasty, then it will beat me, you know, it will beat me back and, and I will have learned a lesson. Yeah, it's like you will get to that conclusion on your own, right? Like, but in that moment, you don't want someone to explain to you, but you misunderstood. It's because you're so sensitive or whatever. Also, never say that to a person that they're yeah, too no, sensitive. Don't. Like, fuck you. <laughs> if exactly, as you were saying, like, you need time for it to sink in. And then you will see how it makes you feel. And if after a while you still say, no, this was a shitty move, and I still feel that way about it, you'll talk to them. But that is your business. 
I love it when friends are just trying to be like helpful and just like, hey, but maybe can't we just have a moment? You and I just you listening to me and understanding what I'm going through and hearing me just, just, just for like two minutes afterwards, you can do your psycho stuff. I don't care. It's hard, you know, to just learn to just listen and just be like, okay, what do you need right now? Yeah. Do you need an answer? Do you need some counseling? Do you need tips, advices? Do you just need to keep venting and, that I just be listening to you. Sometimes it's relevant and it helps to just, you know, give your point of view. Or you could do that, but just always putting it into context. You know, saying, I am saying this right now from my experience, which is mine and mine only. And as we said, you know, this is what helped me. But I'm not trying to say that I know better or that yeah. because... I managed to, you know, get out of that kind of situation, which still is not the same because we're not the same person. No, that helped me. Yeah, I've been going through that with my, my my best friend now, who might not be my best friend in two years. You know, who knows? We're just trying to find the ways and just listen to each other. And yeah, just sometimes we just want to vent. We have this kind of um, trust between us. And, yeah. Or yeah, sometimes we'll be like, so yeah, I sent him a message. I know I shouldn't have blah, blah, blah. And we're just like, okay, you know what I think about him. Like this is not changing for now. But mm -hmm. if you need to talk about it, let's talk about it. And I'm, listen yeah. and I'm listening. Even if I don't like him, if I, even if I think he's toxic to you, even if I think he will hurt you, you know it. Like we have already said it. So now the fact is that you cannot, you're not able right now to get him out of your life. So, yeah. and I don't want to be out of your life just because I don't like him. So I'm going to be here and I'd rather be here if anything happens, even if it's to say, I told you so, which I wouldn't because it's terrible and you don't need to hear that then just be like he's a motherfucker and i don't want to hear about him and then she'll be doing whatever things with him and the day that something if something happens and i won't be here or she won't trust me you know she, she will be afraid to call me i think it's that too it's just understanding that as a friend or as someone that truly listens sometimes you won't be able to help you won't be able to prevent things from yes. happening and you just have to be there when people need you to and sometimes you just have to shut your mouth but sometimes also you have to say things you have to say like okay you don't want to hear that but i'm telling you you've been an asshole and you shouldn't have said that and this is this one's on you and you have to apologize for it because it's not cool and this all goes with uh, re relates to intuition also it's just mm. yeah it's, it's always the same thing just being able to feel you know what the other person needs and not being selfish there is a lot of yeah being able to show or to tell about your experience as something uh, that people should look up to and you're like fuck that's not what I need to hear right now. You know, we're saying it at the, the beginning of our conversation, this, this thing when people feel your potential. It means you have the potential to be looked up to, liked, uh, to make people laugh. And sometimes you don't realize it. So there is first, you know, this first step where you have to understand where you stand. And it's not about boxes and it's not about society or it's just about, yeah, where you stand, what kind of people you are, which is why I feel like all this work I've been doing on myself would be relevant and so helpful for my career because mm. it all comes to that. Who you look like, what kind of people would you look like, uh, what kind of people you don't look like, what can people put on your face, you know, 
as to you know origins uh, a time and space or whatever and also the way you speak you know um the kind of words you use uh the kind of friends you have the things you like the things you dislike what kind of trouble you've been having with people what what kind of pattern just you know keeps repeating them th- themselves and yeah it's a way to just knowing how getting you know more insight to as to how people see you i felt for years that i was kind of invisible and no one would notice me and and yeah and it came to a shock when someone told me you are too much as like meaning you take too much space like when you're here even if you don't talk people you know you're here you don't need to talk you don't need to say funny things you don't need to talk about yourself for people to know that you're here i was like it does not make any sense to me really like i feel like if i don't keep talking 24/7 then people would just you know like forget that i'm here that i exist okay so i just you know like stand there and just say nothing and people be like are you sick like is everything all right <laughs> you have to know so that you can act by it yeah and surprise people in that way as well you know like people will have a certain impression of you that's actually what i wanted to um talk about when we were having our conversation two days ago you said like the first impression is so important to me personally the first impression is probably the thing that always um deceives like yeah. you you meet someone and the feeling is always very accurate i can 100% agree on that but for me the first impression is always like so wrong in a certain way because you only get to see like the mask of a person and then you get to know them and you're like dude layers that's definitely how i felt with you for example when i first met you i thought she seems nuts you're a powerhouse bro like you're so much more than just she seems nice you're someone who has energy you you have this crazy aura and you have the sense of introspection and reflection that i just don't know from a lot of humans <laughs> and i really appreciate that and i think it's so cool that we get to be friends i think you you have the exact same thing and that's what made us connect you know at this level like so fast and so strongly and and not thinking it doesn't make sense like it it, it just felt real yeah. and yeah about first impression i i mean the feeling i mean yeah. you know, the intuition like the feeling in your guts and i think it's also always uh, about time you know meaning where do you stand in your uh time frame in your life you know mm-hmm. like where did you start what are you going through right now and it's the same for another person and it's just like sometimes you meet people that you're meant to just spend three months with and they'll be the best three months of your life and you you'll just have to it will take you seven years to just forget those three months because they mean they meant everything and some people you have to just spend you know seven years together and at some point they'll just be gone and you don't know why because it's just like that like yeah to travel alongside each other for just that much time and also it's all about you know mourning yeah. you have to mourn your relationships and it's so freaking hard you know sometimes i have this feelings with you know tv shows or or films that sometimes you know the character dying is so much easier than when they decide to go you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you know they're still alive and you know they're still living and they're still you know having experiences with other people and you're not part of that life and mm-hmm. it's kind of easier when there's no life at all you have to mourn these relationships and also the person you were because it impacts who you are and i've been having the hardest time to just mourn the the person i was let's say 3 years ago 5 years ago 
it's just weird how I try to live by it and she's gone and she's long gone and she's been gone f- f- forever, you know, and I, I don't even remember exactly what I, what, how I thought by then. And I just have to mourn it and be like, okay, who are you now? And what do you aspire to? And who are the people you want to spend time with and you want to keep, you know, traveling with? In, in terms of intuition again, and when, and when you meet someone for the first time and everything, what I always thought, I meet someone, I like them, they don't seem to like me, but my gut and my feeling tells me this person is worth it. And the heartbreak and the pain that could potentially come with it do not matter in this moment. And when it does come to an end, you know, that's okay. I completely and 100% relate so much to this idea of mourning the person who you were. That is something I talk about in therapy a lot. Just that is the saddest part to me. It's not the people I lost along the way. That's very sad. Sure. Okay, cool. But the sad part is just knowing you were this different person. And it hit so hard that you mentioned like um, you're with someone for three months and it takes you seven years to get over it because how did you know? Um, when I was 17, I was with someone for three months and it took me forever to get over that. And, and just yesterday in therapy, I was like, this is seven years ago. Can you imagine? And I thought I would never be able to get over that. But the hardest part in that whole story is that seven years ago, I was so different. I didn't know better. I didn't want to know better. You know, I was just this young person who just goes through life thinking that the person I was dating was not a drug dealer, but they were. Yeah, it's how people make you feel. And, it, and, yes. and that's what, it, that's what um, dangerous at some point. And that is why it is so, so, so important to work on who you are and how you feel about yourself and, yeah. and finding the worth in yourself. It's just like, okay, no, I know who I am. So you cannot make me believe something else. That's what happens to me a lot, you know, and people be like, you know, or uh, compliment and whatever. And they'd be like, yeah, thank you. I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I I do know. And it's not about being, you know, uh, an asshole. It's just feeling how if I wasn't aware, I would listen with another ear, you know, Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm maybe put myself in danger because I would love the way this guy, for example, is talking about me. But when I know my worth, then that seems so ridiculous. And I'm like, I guess I know. Thank you. I do know. And it does like, but now it does not work. Like I can see how you're trying your way into uh, whatever you're looking for. And, 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 and no, thank you. Which also, you know, justifies the fact that I, I haven't had sex in three years because <laughs> like, I need more. Like right now I'm going to need more than this. Jokes apart. It, it's, it's because I've been working on this and, and it takes time, you know, like it's been three years now, um, a year and a half that I really, you know, went for it. And I'm mm-hmm. still trying, and but it, I feel better, you know. This quarantine and everything, it helped uh, taking the time for myself and just being also um, far from people's uh, people's eyes and people's judgment, and yeah, just trying to be like, okay, what what do I look like? What do for me, you know, like as objectively as I could. Mm-hmm. And trying to get yeah, this kind of other way of communicating. When I get in, into a Zoom conversation, there is a purpose. And you, you have a, a topic, you have a subject you're going to talk about. And in life, you could do whatever, you know, you could be too much or whatever, because there's time and we're here, you know. It's crazy how I don't have to think like, okay, uh, what clothes do I wear? Uh, how do I see it for my belly not to seem too big and whatever? And how do I see it for, not, you know, I just, you know, there is this frame and that's it and, and it's fine. And so it helped me being more myself, you know, and less, yeah, just trying less, 
you know, sometimes like, fuck, you try so hard, just come down, okay? Just try to relax and just be who you are and it will be fine. All these people I've been working with um, this past two months, it's crazy how I've been able to be myself and those are people I never met before. I feel like they, they understand, you know, it's a lot through working. Uh, even if we have a writing workshop with three, four of them, which is a bit different, um, they kind of see who I am, you know, they kind of understand. Um, even when I talk too much uh, or the fact that I'm able to listen to uh, critics and just try to work on them and try to step aside when I feel like I'm too much here. I had really good, you know, feedback about it. And it's crazy and it feels good because I'm like, okay, fuck. So I just need to be myself and not worry about all, you know, all that's going from down there because who cares? I mean, I'm... (sighs) It's crazy. When when we met and you were like, there's this weird soul connection. I was like, how did you? Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> it was too good to have that conversation with you. And I'm glad that when I saw you and you were a little bit taken aback the first time we met, you're like, mm-hmm. did you just interrupt me? That I was like, this is all worth it. I made a fool of myself and now I'm here to stay. And I'm yeah. glad I did. And I'm glad we make fools of ourselves a lot of the time because it is worth it sometimes. And those are the most important times. So completely. And it's also, you know, it's crazy. I mean, I I couldn't even say like, yeah, of course it's worth it. And and also I I feel like this is why it happened and I don't have many much answers about it. it. It's just crazy. And, but it feels right. And it's, it was, yeah, it was meant to be, you know, in some way, and I am really, really glad to um, that we met, that it went like that, and that you invited me here today. It, it really means a lot to me. It's really, really an honor. Like I, I'm not even kidding. Like it is. And um, so, yeah, thank you for your kindness and friendship, and and you know, to be uh, uh, an ever listening ear and to be. Yeah, that much caring and and funny and yeah, you're amazing. Really, like we've been talking a lot about me and how I'm this kind of superhero, which not what it is. It's just hard work. But yeah, you are too. And I, I feel like anyone that's listening right now would know because they they've been listening to the others, uh, the other episode. Thank you for this and and thank you for being able to listen to yourself too and to trust your instincts and always try to be a good person, which you are actually, you know, you're really also uh, demonstrative about your admiration or affection or friendship to people. And it's, it doesn't come easy for them, to me, it, it really does not come easy to me to just say how much I appreciate people unless we're really close and then I will say it the whole time. But I really don't. And I think that's something I have to work on because I'm, I'm having trouble to just say, I appreciate you. I have spent a good time with you. Thank you. You, you mean a lot to me. You help me. I never say those things. It's really hard for me. So yeah, on that, you're, you're such a a good example to look up to and yeah thank Thank you you. it just makes me it's just so important for me to just say these things to remind people because we don't do it enough right yeah of course we don't we really don't i've been thinking about doing this with you forever by the way but it didn't feel like the timing was as perfect as I wanted it to be and then when two days ago you were like let's have a phone call I'm like yes and then you know I also suggested to I feel like this is also important for us because we are uh physically you know far away from each other not crazy far but corona is not Mm -hmm. making it easier (laughs) and uh you know money and stuff so I'm really happy that we get to reconnect and that's just super important um and I'm sure 
I'm sure everything's going to be fine. I'm sure we'll see each other again soon, and then it will be so... It's magical spending time with you. So thank you. Yeah, for well, for, for me too. And it, it was really important to me too because we left off in the kind of rough place, even if it was amazing. And I spent such a good time in Austria and I really feel like Vienna is my favorite town ever for whatever reason. I don't know when I'm there. I just, you know, when I spent 10 days there, I just felt home and... Yeah. And it was really weird because I was I was in a bad place and and you welcomed me anyway and you were listening to me and just yeah you pushed a little bit you pushed me a little bit to just say what was wrong and it helped me a lot like it did and it was it, it was hard and it took me quite a long time to just process process everything and be come to terms with it but uh i needed that and i'm not sure that i would have i i would be a different person right now if i hadn't had the opportunity to do that back then so yeah and i'm i'm so glad we get to talk uh at length about this i'm sorry for the sound editing it's going to be terrible <laughs> it's, it's out so um <laughs> But yeah, no, it's amazing, really. We could, I, I feel like we could, you know, talk an hour about, no, thank you, no, thank you. No, <laughs> don't talk about it, don't mention it. No, thank you. But yeah, no, it, it's, it's important also because we're f far away from each other and we actually haven't spent that much time together. But it does feel more real with you than with people that I've been spending, you know, six years with uh, mm -hmm. that I've known for a lot of time uh, and also yeah you're one of the people I want to share a thing with when when things happen and and so yeah I'm glad that you shared that with me today it's really it's really cool and for you you witches uh, listeners <laughs> out there just <laughs> follow your intuitions and yeah be true to yourself and check out Audrey on the social medias because she's hilarious um it's yeah. <laughs> how is it now because you change your instagram handle a lot what is it now is it is at underscore audrey rbt like you have those moments pretty much you know like we both do that i think where we just <laughs> go crazy in our stories and still it's all very aesthetically pleasing because you do a lot of work on that um in your feed which i don't but that's cool um yeah i really have to go to the bathroom so yes, I'm, and I really need to smoke my cigarette right now. So obviously, what am timing. I even thinking of? Perfect timing. <laughs> <laughs> necessities, you know, bare necessities, peeing, smoking, same, exact same. <laughs> Absolutely. This is what we have to do. Oh, it's Friday. Have a lovely weekend. You too. I'll see you soon. And yes. thank you for coming over ish. Thank you. Mwah. Bye. Bye bye. Ho 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 ho.